Welcome to another Too Many Projects episode with today's project, the uh, Suffolk Super Punch. This is a classic British lawnmower. I mean, it's a bit lame to be calling British lawnmowers classic, but I do have fond memories with my father in the garden. He used to own one of these, the red and green. I don't know if it was the same model, of course, but you know, it was red and green, and it made the same noises as this one does when you turn it on, which is a lot of noises. Um, and uh, pleasingly, I picked this one up from my mum and dad's next door neighbour um, growing up. And he died a long time ago, and this was in the garage for a long time. So I, uh, they kindly let me have it, let me take it away. Um, I was expecting to have to dismantle the engine, um, you know, deal with a lot of these rust spots on the uh, front, but actually I got it home. I had a little bit of a fiddle with the, with the fuel tap and the hose. And then it started after about, well, it was probably quite a few, quite a few pulls on, on the starter rope. But it's not, it's not in great nick. Uh, the side plate is falling off. It's not it's all sort of bent out of shape. You can see the rust. It has got this excellent caravan club, I would say 1980s at the latest uh, GB sticker. It does need some, a little bit of adjustment on with the fuel delivery. It does cut out a few times. You have to sort of poke around with it um, to get it running. But I got it home and I just started cutting grass with it after a half an hour of fiddling. And I've been doing that for months now. I did have a perfectly reasonable modern uh, flymo, but this, the, the cylinder on this, um, which spins around and just uh, effects a really nice sharp cut between the top and bottom blades underneath there. And then this spins around and these are the cylinder blades. Um, they just, it makes you, garden look like a film set rather than a fly my lad. Um, it stops cutting that beautifully now. It's getting a little bit rubbish. And so I'm going to be sharpening these blades today in having a little chat about what this project, this little project might entail. So first job, I'm going to flip it onto its back and I'm going to start just cleaning the dried on grass that's on here off. Sit down nicely there. Got a trusty credit card. This is what they were designed for after all. So what I'm thinking for this lawnmower is, is as I got it home it was um, started it up out the back eventually with a little bit of fiddling and immediately excitedly got to cutting the lawn. Um, Got to watch your fingers here, by the way. I noticed straight away how electric lawn mowers, and certainly compared with old petrol mowers, um, I've really dropped in volume quite a lot. And I was a bit worried that I might be in trouble with my neighbours, but I was probably being a little bit sensitive. I mean, it's fine, it's only a lawn mower, for goodness sake. There again, it was half past eight at night, which is not really not late, I don't know. But I thought to myself, I thought, you know what would be cool? Because let's face it, what I like about this lawnmower is that my dad had one, and it makes a nice noise, which I could probably get rid of the noise and keep the red and green classic look and, and be really pleased with myself. So I'm thinking about, as a project, Wanting to learn a bit more about um, electric drivetrains um, and how to wire up an electric drivetrain and manage charging and things like that in a in a vehicle. That would be something cool to learn about. But I'm not going to go and get an electric car anytime soon. So I mean, you know, it would be something I would do to buy an electric car, uh, an electric car, and then take it apart. But it'd be quite fun to just um, try and turn this into an electric car keep the whole chassis, remove the engine, and try and manufacture something that looks very similar to the current engine, but actually contains a number of batteries and, uh, and a little electric motor to drive it in the same way. Um, I think that would be a, you know, that would be a pretty cool thing to do. I'm a bit late, aren't I? 
it's a lawnmower, I was going to say. But I think that would be a cool thing to do. I think some of you guys out there might use it. I think that's quite a cool, cool thing to do as well. Um, let me know what you think. I'd love to know if there's some sort of resources that anyone recommends. I imagine I'd be looking at, um, just been thinking about it a little bit, I've been thinking I'd probably be looking at um, parts for uh, model aeroplanes or something like that. Well, I just one buy parts for, for sort of large electric models and things like that. I imagine there's a lawnmower for them, but I don't expect that's quite the right place to learn how to design electric systems. Maybe it is, I don't know. Anyway, I'll come back to you when this is, uh, when all this crap's cleared off. There we go. So that's all very slightly cleaned up. Now, one thing we're going to need is to spin this blade against an abrasive on the bottom blade so that as it comes round, it actually flattens off all of the blades on the cylinder. Um, people on the internet who, who know what they're doing tend to use a paintbrush and just come across the blade with grinding paste as they spin it backwards, which means as it then goes over the bottom blade, grinds the two of them together, which is a great way of doing it. But lucky for us, we have the, where is it? <laughs> Came with the lawnmower. The mower mate. This excellent full set of instructions that I will also um, pop on the internet. Design Center London. Wow, I'd love to know when that was from. Probably the late 80s, I would guess. Maybe the early 90s. Anyway, um, and what this actually is, is just a clip-on abrasive strip that goes onto the bottom blade, has replaceable abrasives, and we're going to be able to spin it to make the cylinder blades flat. The bottom blade is fine, I mean, it's, I can see it is fine. So, First thing to do is to take off the side panel here to see if we can spin it without starting the engine. Because if we start the engine, we have to worry about the fact that when it's spinning, it's also possibly going forwards. You're supposed to be able to not go forwards whilst you also have the blade spinning. But there are some little clutch adjustments I haven't bothered with, and it might just go off into the distance at any moment. It's not the right spanner. I just uh, just don't have the time or the budget or the space in my life for a set of imperial spanners or in fact any imperial tools sorry America and old British people so big chain great love it now the man on the internet I've discovered uh, I found who had a different lawnmower but was clearly very authoritative reckoned that if I turn that it's going to spin. What I don't want to do is A, make the drive wheel at the back start turning, or B, turn the engine over and start it by accident. And just turn it very gently to see what happens. Oops. So that's backwards and that, that, oh no, that's backwards. Forwards, there we go. We've done it already. It's, a, it's an electric conversion. Just stick a drill on the side and follow it round. Right. Let's have a look at the instructions. So, step one. Turn the mower on its side or back. Clean the blades. Check if they're broken. Great, done it. Step two, we need to adjust the gap. So we're actually going to move this up using um, a precision two precision tools advised by the instructions, which are two two p pieces. That's a two penny piece for those who are not British. The state of our world is that I don't have any 2P pieces here. We're going to average it out at two 2P pieces being over 4 mil. Which is a 
real measurement for real meat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the ruler on the bottom of this top blade and I'm going to back the blade off using these adjustment screws. So it's looking like as this turns uh, forward, which is that way, uh, the cylinder helps keep the mower mate forced into there where it's quite well locked in. It would pull off quite easily. But, um, and this, these, this tiny piece of metal just applies, there's a little bit of flex in and out, and this just uh, springs it against it. So as we spin it around, it's going to sand away. The edge of the blade. All right, we'll go slow first to make sure we're going the right way. Or not. So as I keep going faster, I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm going to try and keep my hands well out of the way. I've just. I think I'm going to just apply some gentle pressure here. I don't think it's really. I don't think it's really got enough force to those springs. I'm use my fingers obviously, but we'll just try that. Alright, I can see some, some improvement, that's good. It's getting a bit shinier. Okay, these blades were pretty bad, and now that I can see the shiny bits and the bits, the pits in the blade that we're trying to get rid of, that's very clear. There we go. All right, let's keep going. I think we'll uh, call that a day. So let's take this off, pop that back in its box. There's still pitting on this, I think it's about as good as I'm going to get it for an old lawnmower. You can still buy these cylinders, so I'm, you know that might be the next job. Um, some of this pitting on the edge of them, right on the blade, is really deep. Uh, so now what we need to do is adjust it back down so it's right on top of that bottom blade. It's going to be quite a few turns. It should just touch it. I found I needed to snug those down a little bit closer than people suggest on the internet, possibly because the blades are a bit pit and rubbish and old, but I think now if I spin it back round again we should be able to see uh, bit of a rubbish spot in the middle there. Yeah, just there is some problems. It's far from clean, but I think a new set of blades might be the solution for that rather than grinding away at these old things. I'm happy, I'm going to go and mow the lawn. See you in a minute.